This is Keys to the Shop, episode 369, an encore episode of how to be a cash register hero. Well, hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Keys to the Shop, where we give you insights, inspiration, and the tools you need to grow as a coffee service professional. My name is Chris DiFurio and I'm your host for the show. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Now, if you haven't yet done so, I would encourage you to go ahead and hit subscribe wherever you get your podcast. And when you subscribe to Keys to the Shop, you'll always be updated with new content, which comes out frequently, uh, and you'll never miss any of the great episodes. So go ahead and hit subscribe and also share these episodes with a friend. Leave a rating or review for Keys to the Shop on your podcast player. Uh, All of that is so, so appreciated and really and truly helps the show grow. Now, Keys to the Shop on top of doing this podcast also offers consulting and coaching for you and your business. If you are a coffee shop owner and you wanna take your operations, your people and your quality to the next level, solve some problems, build systems that increase clarity, profitability, and peace of mind for you as you build your business, then Keys to the Shop Consulting might be the right fit. There are a lot of different ways we can work together, whether through remote coaching and consultation or on site in your cafe through cafe assessments. I would love to talk with you about creating a custom plan to help you thrive as a coffee shop owner. And so in order to do that, just email me, chris at keys to the shop dot com at chris at keys to the shop dot com and we'll get on a free discovery call to find out how keys to the shop consulting can help you again that email for keys to the shop consulting chris at keys to the shop dot com now one of the best parts about working in the coffee industry is the relationships as you build your network and get involved in the community there are so many creative people in this world of coffee coming up with solutions for problems and that's why i'm so excited to have met the folks from voga coffee the inventors of the ground control cyclops brewer that is revolutionizing batch brew coffee as we know it the sca award-winning technology in the ground control brewer allows you the user to extract an incredible range of flavors from each and every coffee on your menu. And that opens up so many possibilities for your customers to enjoy your coffee on another level. Uh, Not only is this a game-changing batch brewer, but it also makes batch diced lattes, batch cold brew. So it offers you more efficiency and productivity more profitability, and better flavor and consistency. And I really think you should check them out over at groundcontrol.coffee to learn more. If you really want to differentiate your coffee shop and let your coffees truly shine, then I think you should be looking at getting a Ground Control Cyclops Brewer for your cafe. Go ahead and visit them again and find out more over at groundcontrol.coffee. You know, it makes a lot of sense when you create a product to do so with the end user in mind, the customer in mind. And when it comes to plant-based beverages, you really have to think about the barista. That's exactly what the people over at the Barista Series from Pacific have done, creating the Barista Series line of plant-based performance beverages. They thought about who's using this. It's baristas. They created these for baristas. They are tested by baristas before they make it onto your counters and are served to your customers. That's why they perform so well. They stand up to the heat from steaming, produce amazing texture for latte art, and the balance of the final drink is focused on the coffee. It's a great harmony brought about by intentionality, research and development, and just a love for specialty coffee and the people that work in it. So you should go check them out over at pacificfoodservice.com to learn more and then get samples in your store and try it for yourself. If you are looking to serve the best plant-based beverages out there, it has to be the Barista Series from Pacific. Okay, everybody. Well, today we are going to throw back to an older episode of Keys to the Shop. This one was episode 122, How to Be a Cash Register Hero. We're talking about six essential skills to have when you're working on the register. And now one of the reasons why I'm bringing this out is because, well, first of all, we have a lot of new listeners to the show over the past couple of years or so. And uh, it's a big library of content that's difficult to comb through. So doing these encore episodes really makes a lot of sense to me. But, you know, I really feel as all this talk that we've been doing about differentiating the way that we uh, serve customers and express hospitality to customers, we have to pay attention attention to how we demonstrate that when we're giving that first impression 
at the POS, at the register. It's so critical uh, that whoever is on there is not just somebody who's thrown on there to hack it out on their own, but they're trained and they're prepared and they know what the expectations are because first impressions are very, very important. This is the prime space where hospitality is experienced and expectations are set. And uh, it makes sense, doesn't it? But all the time I go into coffee shops and when you get to the register, it's just frenetic, it's uh, frazzled, it's chaos, it's confusion, and it's apologetic or it's just gruff. You know, pick a number of different kind of default modes that we have other than, you know, that confident, happy, knowledgeable, quick, uh, precise person that you want to have working there. That's the dream, right? So the whole purpose of, you know, listening to this today should be, okay, let's pick up some things that we can put into practice in our coffee shop so that we can train our people to be cash register heroes. And it's not just about serving the customers either. We're going to talk about serving each other and making sure that, you know, a person who runs the register is not just, you know, there to be a face, but they're also a, you know, a brain and a set of hands that are helping, you know, coordinate this whole experience for the customers and often their coworkers. So I want you to get into the mind space that this is an area where you likely could use some improvement because I think all of us could. Uh, it, it, there's always room for us to refine and uh, reinforce and resource our people to excel in this position of the cash register. And so I'm excited for this to be shared today. I hope you find a lot of value from it. So here now is the encore episode of how to be a cash register hero. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about being a cash register hero. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about skills that we need to be focusing on in order to work the cash register well. Um, and, and that, of course, goes beyond the ability to do math well. We're dealing with interactions with the public, and we are the first face that people see when you come into the cafe oftentimes, depending on how your, your bar is set up. The rest of the entire shift is set up by the experience people have at the register. So uh, the role of cash register, though, I think is much maligned. Um, there, it's repetition, there's task switching, there's unknowns, there's the human element, of course, and it's one of the more emotionally taxing places to be on the bar, if not the most emotionally taxing place to be. So we like to gravitate toward the espresso machine to escape from that because we don't see the relevance of uh, working the cash register in barista work as much as we do machine work. You know, we can see this not just by studying our own attitudes about it, but also our practices in the cafe. Uh, who gets the most training in the cafe? That would be the espresso station. People using the espresso machine to create the beverages, they get, uh, you know, 80, 90% of what there is to be trained on is trained in that station. And where do people go to hack it out mostly on their own with minimal training? That's the register. <laughs> That's the place where new people go. Um, there's some training in, in order for you to learn uh, modifiers, uh, where the discount codes are, where the buttons are, all that stuff. And, and then when you're at a workable place and you feel kind of comfortable and the manager hears kind of a half-hearted yes to a question of, how do you feel? Do you feel ready? Then we kind of call victory, a little, maybe a little too soon, because we all know, and we've all been there, where you start a job and you've, you pretty much spend half your time looking over your shoulder asking people about things that you weren't necessarily trained for. And part of this is just because working in the coffee bar, if you're not working directly with coffee, it just doesn't capture your attention. And management and ownership can sometimes funnel all of the care and the tension and training on nuance to those things involving milk and espresso. But the station where a lot of the experience is set up, that the register atrophies for lack of attention and use. So this is a problem because when your business depends on how people are treated and how people are, are um, experiencing the people who represent you, when they do a poor job, sometimes uh, as a fault of their own and 
a lot of times as a fault of a lack of training and attention, then people get a bad impression, okay? If it's not a good experience at the register, chances are it's going to be a less than great experience overall because that's the first impression. If it's a good and robust experience at the register, then it sets up the drinks and the enjoyment part for success. It sets up the rest of this whole uh, specialty coffee uh, shop visit for success. And that's not just talking about how the customer interacts with the cash register. That's also how the baristas who are making the drinks and everybody else who is essentially um, snapped into action by a ticket coming out of a printer or a cup landing on the bar with writing on it, how they are able to either succeed or not succeed based on how well the barista at the cash register is doing their job. There's all sorts of things that can fall by the wayside if they're not handled right at the register and the rest of the crew is kind of left to pick up the pieces. So all this to say, we in specialty coffee shops, we need to provide a specialty experience first at the register. And in order to do that, we need to first address managers and owners, people who have the ability to change policy to determine what money gets spent where, uh, what words get put into manuals. So you have to look at this place at the register as probably the most important of the cafe. And if you thought that your business depended on the success of this position, then you would concentrate a lot of effort into training the baristas in the nuances of working that cash register. That's the first thing to really uh, reflect on is looking at your manual, looking at your practices and training, are you forgetting about the cash register? And in so doing, by not giving it the attention it needs, are you communicating to baristas that it's not an important position? This is a great question to ask yourself. And I would hope that you arrive at the conclusion that uh, we need to focus on the contingencies, the frequently asked questions, you know, how to handle customer complaints, how to communicate with baristas, etc. in the kitchen. There's so many things. And we're going to go over the top six here in this episode that you need to put into the manual, that you need to communicate to baristas about and let them see you value it out loud, in print, and in practice. This is how we develop register skills that match our coffee making skills. So with all of that said, I want to go over what I feel are the top six foundational things that uh, happen at the register that need to be trained and put into your manual and and, and put into um, a training module and and trained just like you would for espresso with practice, with, you know, feedback and nuance. So number one, we're going to go all the way back to episode 45 with our friend, Philip Paul Turner over at Suntergast Coffee. He's a manager at their Fifth Street store downtown. Um, One of the best examples, if not the number one example of hospitality I know of in coffee. And his mantra for himself and his staff is that you want the customers to be acknowledged, welcomed, and included. Now, it's my opinion that this is everybody's job, of course, but it really does fall on the register to complete this process, to really tie it together. You might not be aware of somebody coming in the door, but the barista is. And in that case, of course, you have to greet the person. You have to acknowledge them. You've got to make them feel welcomed and and included in the space because you see them and you're happy to see them. Now, all of that comes together when they're at the register. If you do all of that and it's not followed up, by register doing those things, then you don't feel like you're getting this complete uh, hospitality experience. It's easy to try to just move people along in the line and not treat them as individuals. This is a time where making people feel acknowledged, welcomed, and included in your space, uh, that really key component of hospitality, this is the place where a lot of that happens. So that's number one train people on how to do that in your cafe. Number two is that you need to be able to answer people's questions about products and policies, prices, all of those things. Now, um, 
this means you need to know that people know. Not just have them read the menu and then assume that they know. You can test people on if they know the elevation of a particular coffee that's on the offering list. But do we test people on whether they know the prices of things or whether they can name off all of the modifiers that are available for a latte? Typically, we don't do that because all of that is on the screen and we're so used to the barista hunting and trying to scroll through different menus all the while giving some kind of small talk to the customer like, well, it's here somewhere. Oh, I can never find this button here and all that stuff. And, and I've totally done that. And, and sometimes it's really awkward for the customer to just wait there. And it doesn't inspire confidence that the people who are making my coffee know much about even the most basic things of the cafe. So one of the things that you can do to solve this problem is kind of think ahead and put into writing the solutions to problems or questions that customers are going to have and then have the baristas study that manual of FAQs and study all of the details about the register. One thing that I've done in the past is that you can print all of the um, screens on the register and give them out as a manual and say, know where these buttons are. What do they mean? Here is a list of modifiers as they appear on the iPad or whatever you use for a, a POS system. Give it to people so that they can hold it and walk away with it and study it. Give every opportunity to have product knowledge and preparedness in answering questions and you're going to have a, a trust built with the customers as they interact with this employee. So not only have they given you a really great experience by making you feel acknowledged and, and welcomed and included, but they've also shown you that they know their stuff. And that is going to inspire another level of confidence in the customer. So number three on the list of six things that need to be at the foundation of working uh, the cash register well is communication to customers. Communication not only about what it is that you have, but what it is that they have ordered. Abil your ability to clearly articulate to them the options, what they mean, how they uh, affect their drink. Somebody says to you something like, uh, I'll have a, um, I'll use this Rishi tea, for example, a blueberry rooibos tea, and leave some room for cream. Your mind could either go, okay, fine, I'll do that. And the customer's always right. I'm going to give them what they want. A barista who's paying attention is going to communicate to the customer that their drink will probably curdle because of the, uh, the berries and the acidity in that tea. Okay? Communication to customers about their beverage, making sure that you get them the drink that they want and that they're going to love. Interpreting what they say from other co coffee shops when they come in, it's a classic um, caramel macchiato situation. What on your menu most closely matches what they're asking about? We can't just stand there and expect people to say the right words. We are there as translators and guides to a great coffee experience. And we've got to be prepared to communicate to them in such a way that offers them clarity. And we repeat their drink back to them. That's another skill in communication to customers. You repeat the drink back to them so that they know that what they're getting is um, in the computer and it's going to come out the other end the way that they ordered it. So we're building them up and we're communicating in such a way that tells them this is what you can expect. And it eases a lot of the discomfort that comes from standing at the register, which is classic. You know, you got a big menu sometimes and there's people behind you. You want people to feel comfortable how you communicate what you say to customers matters a lot. So there's a clarifying aspect to your communication, but there's also a disarming aspect to your communication. There has to be an ease. There has to be a, 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 a rhythm to the way that you, you know, not only hold yourself, but the way you speak that doesn't try to rush them necessarily, but gets things done efficiently in, in a way that's pleasing. So how you communicate to your customers and what you communicate to them is critical. Now the next thing, number four, you have to be able to train somebody on the register to communicate orders pr 
properly to the baristas? Do they have clear handwriting? Do they speak up? Are they able to put the tickets in a, a predictable pattern? Um, are they paying attention to where they, they uh, make adjustments on the uh, order if there are things that need to be adjusted? If somebody forgot to get soy and you already put the ticket down that says whole milk, are you going to remember to cross out whole milk and put soy on that drink? Because chances are the barista has already poured the pitcher of milk for that drink because they're thinking ahead. You need to have enough awareness about that to make sure that they're going to do something about that alteration. It's your responsibility to get the customer what they want just as much as it is the barista's. Communication to the barista also requires that you have answers to questions about who ordered what. Sometimes people, oftentimes people, (laughs) are in conversations and they don't hear their drink being called. Now, if you're in a full service um, cafe, that's great. This still applies, though, because the person who ordered the drink uh, is face-to-face with pretty much just one employee, and that's register. So if anyone's going to know who ordered that 16-ounce mocha, it's going to be register. And we need to be able to train people uh, and train ourselves to remember people's faces, remember their drinks, at least for the short term, at least long enough to be helpful to the other people responsible for fulfilling that order. So that is really critical, communication to baristas. You can also do things like say the drink back to them loud enough that you signal the baristas behind you to start making a drink. Happens all the time. That's how we stay ahead. I'll say, uh, okay, a 16 ounce cold brew to go. And then I'll start typing it in. I'm doing two things at once. Customer knows what they're getting. I know there's a barista behind me listening and they're starting to get the ice for that. This is really a nuance of communicating to baristas in your shop, in your space, you might have different little things that would be helpful. You know, chances are your baristas already know what these little things are because whether you've trained them to do these things or not, the chances are your baristas already know what these little um, nuances are because whether or not you've trained them to do it, out of survival, they've adapted. So now it needs to be codified and it needs to be put into practice as an official policy. Another thing with communication to baristas, not relying solely on tickets or cup scribbles to communicate but speaking in eye contact and and having an understood confirmation like yes or they repeat the drink back to you Um, typically that's what we do on the bar at quills is we'll say the drink and the barista will say it back to us sometimes it doesn't happen sometimes it does it's just something we do it's not technically official policy but it helps a lot and this brings us to number five on the list and that is to have an empathetic peripheral awareness of what's going on. On register, you need to survey what's going on, not only with customers as they come in, but what's going on on the floor, what's going on behind you. You're basically a conductor of this cafe, and it kind of reinforces, again, this um, notion that the register is such an important place in the coffee bar. Having an awareness of what goes on around you means that you are uh, able to help a lot of people tie up loose ends with their orders, get the orders to the right places, help your fellow staff, and not just isolate yourself to that one particular um, counter. And that brings us to the final skill that we should be teaching uh, people working the cash register, and that is to pace the line. I can't tell you the number of times that I've seen in cafes where espresso, the station espresso, gets buried because of an overzealous cash register employee who doesn't really read the room. And all they're doing is putting sauce in cups and pushing cups down the line, and whatever happens on the barista's end is their business. This is a team effort, and sometimes it's not sneaky, it's actually for the good, Register needs to slow things down. I have come up to register before and I've whispered, hey, 
slow the line down a little bit, you know, compliment their tie or something, like make, make some chit chat, take a couple extra seconds to give them their change. Um, you know, there's little things that you can do. Prepare the drink a little bit extra for the barista. Restock a pastry while talking to them. Look busy, engage, anchor the conversation with eye contact and, and smile. These are you know, common things we should be doing at the register, smiling and, and eye contact, right? Do that, but don't just see how fast you can take an order and move the line down. Because uh, you know, a lot of times, the anxiety that the register employee feels about a line to the door causes them to want to move that line as quickly as possible, regardless of whether or not that line moves anywhere but five feet down. You know, you've got the same number of people now waiting for their drink over by the espresso machine. And um, that's really not doing anyone any favors. That's way worse, actually, than having a line uh, in front of you because people really start to count the time it takes for their drink when they get their change back from their order. If they're waiting for their drink, we're used to that. Lines in a shop is something that we do, okay? It's a model that we have for coffee, and people are used to it. When you get their change back and they've placed their order, that's where time really starts to get warped in their mind, and they're super sensitive to it. So it could take five minutes to make the drink, but in the world of a customer who's waiting by the espresso machine, it's actually 10 minutes. And we know it's not, but we don't want to just move them past the register as quickly as possible you want to do things that allow baristas to breathe. Sometimes you might even have to get off the register and help them steam some milk and help them um, pour uh, milk into an ice cup. You can do all this while still engaging the person at the register. And in my experience, when you're joyful, when you're hardworking, when you're acknowledging them, but also doing a task and say, I'll be right with, even if you just say, I'll be right with you. People are so forgiving. People are so forgiving and gracious about that. This is obviously something that you might need to look at from a workflow perspective. Maybe you need an extra employee, but the fact is, is that if you don't pace the line, you're going to bury espresso. This is something I saw at America's Best Coffee House, which was a competition I used to run in with Coffee Fest back in the day. It was a team-based competition, and um, it was a great competition of kind of bias. It was my baby. But we would have three people from a shop, and they would divide themselves by cash register, brew bar, and espresso. And almost always you would see, with the exception of the people that did the best, Espresso would get buried because cash register was just in their own world. They weren't aware of what was going on around them. And had they been aware, they would have also therefore been uh, concerned about how is the customer going to perceive moving down the line but not getting their drink. So pacing the line, this is a really critical issue. You need to be able to finesse the interaction, spread out some of the questions that you have about their order, chit-chat a bit, maybe do some of the restocking of pastries or brew another pot of coffee. You can do those things strategically when you know that espresso is having a bit of a hard time keeping up. That way, at least you have a constant. You have something that's predictable. But without that, you just create chaos. So these six skills, I think, are foundational. Again, they are number one, acknowledging, welcoming, and including the guest. Number two, uh, you have to have product knowledge and preparedness in terms of answering questions about what is on offer in this cafe. Um, number three, communication to the customer about their drink and uh, making sure that the communication uh, that you have is at the same time as it's accurate and clarifying, is also warm and hospitable. And number four, communication to the baristas so that you're able to help them successfully complete the order. Number five, you got to have that peripheral awareness. You got to break out of that station and be aware of what's going on around you. And number six, use that awareness. 
to pace the line, especially when it's getting super busy in the cafe. You want to have a really great experience lined up for your customers. And these six skills are at the foundation of what it takes to work the register really well. The register is an extremely important place for specialty coffee. So let's make it an extremely important priority in the way we train our employees, in what we put in our training literature, and what we talk about, and what we test on, and what we take pride in in our shops. Okay, everyone. Well, what did you think? Did you learn something? Did you, you know, have some insights? Did you have some ideas about what you can do to create a, a better environment for uh, training and expectations and uh, resourcing the people that work the cash register? How can you help your staff be cash register heroes? I think, uh, you know, like we said here, a lot of this depends on your mindset towards that position. And with that position, I think there needs to be a lot of reverence. And where there's reverence and mindset, I think we direct our our uh, resources and our intention. And that's maybe the first step that we need to take is let's be honest w with ourselves about, you know, maybe some of the lopsidedness of where we're putting our intention and our resources. And then we can see the hospitality increase in our cafes. We can see people feeling a little bit better about their work at the register and people who work with them feel great about being supported by that person and supporting that person as well. So uh, again, I hope that you enjoyed that. Don't forget to check out the related episodes that are listed in the show notes here for this Encore episode. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback about this show, of course, you can always email me, chris at keystotheshop.com. That's also where you can reach out to inquire about Keys to the Shop Consulting where you can work one-on-one -on -one with me to help you uh, build a better business and increase your profitability, your quality, and level up your operations. To have a discovery call with me, go ahead and email chris at keystotheshop.com. And I'm excited because as I am airing this, it's only like two days away from Coffee Fest in Seattle. It is the 30 year anniversary of Coffee Fest and Seattle is just like this, you know, it's the home of Coffee Fest, but that's three decades of serving the coffee retail industry with what is this epicenter of resourcing and education and empowerment to help you run a great coffee bar through uh, great educational tracks that have uh, lectures, trainings and workshops, panel discussions. There's the show floor that gives you access to vendors that can help you stock your cafe with the best products. There's competitions like cold brew and latte art. And then there's the community that you get to be a part of. Uh, just meeting other people in the industry is so encouraging. So many people's teams come back energized. You are equipped. I, I can't speak highly enough about it. Been doing it since 2004. And I hope to see you there. Go check them out at coffeefest.com and uh, see when the upcoming shows are. Hopefully you can make it to this one in Seattle, but if you can't, there's another whole set of uh, four shows in 2023 coming up. Uh, again, I hope to see you at one of these shows. Please do say hello and find out more information over at coffeefest.com. And with that, everyone, it's the end of our show. Thank you so much for your time and listening, supporting this show. Please do follow us on Instagram at keys to the shop. Share these episodes with a friend. Have an awesome day. And as always, I hope that this episode has truly given you keys to the shop.